Hi, I'm Liam Milan, and in this video, we're going to look at the slice to MIDI function in Ableton Live. So when we're working with audio, we can take it as it is and load it into a project and have it loop around. We can slice it up on the actual arrangement view and reorder the parts. But all of this is kind of programming based. We're using our, our mouse controller and we're, we're interacting with things on the screen. Now, slice to MIDI will allow us to take an audio loop, slice it into different pieces, and then map it across the keys on a keyboard. What that opens up is that real-time interaction and unexpected results you can get from just exploring and playing with an idea. So I have two different audio clips I want to sort of use as a beginning, potentially, of a creative uh, starting point for, a, for an idea. So I have a loop already loaded in. I can stop myself. And I have a, a, another loop, which is already in the browser. I haven't loaded it in yet. So I'm going to start on the rhythm section first. So rather than just bring that extra loop in, if I control and click, I can do slice to new MIDI track. And then I'm presented with kind of a preferences as to how it's going to do this task for me. So the first thing it's asking me is based on the warp information of that audio file, which is it's Ableton Live's knowledge of where the beats and the bars lie in that audio loop. Where do you want to make these slices? Now, transients is where there's the peaks in the actual audio. So for rhythmic stuff, that's a good place to start. Or we can go for different types of measures. We can go for what's called warp markers, where we actually intentionally put in our own little markers on the file. Or we can do it by musical measurements, bars, beats, and so on as well. So in most cases, as long as it's got rhythmic information, Transient is the best place to start. Now, in terms of the slicing preset, we we'll explore the different ones in a minute. We have the built-in one, which is the vanilla version of this function. And then we have all these different interpretations as to what you might want to do with these slices once they're put in this new environment for you. So we'll go with the most simplest version first, built-in, and then press OK to have that happen. So what's happened now is a new MIDI track's opened up. And on that MIDI track is what's called a drum rack. Now, a drum rack is kind of like a drum machine, except it can host synthesizers and samples as well. So in this case, it's taken the audio that I brought into the environment, sliced it up by the transients, and put them across the different pads on the drum rack. So if I just click the little play icon or the preview button, That's our drum uh, loop loaded into different individual slices. And if I just expand the view of the track and double click the MIDI clip it's created, it's actually created a sequence that will play back the loop in its original form for us as well. So if I just solo that track, so although it sounds like the original loop, it's not, it's individual slices and the MIDI's been put in place for it to play back as normal. Now that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to reinterpret this audio clip. So I'm going to delete that MIDI clip now. And I'm going to set myself up with a new MIDI clip. So insert MIDI clip there. And then I'll press the Command and L button just to loop that section. And then let's move over to the controller keyboard. So as long as this is record armed, I can experiment with the different sounds that I've got until something either grabs me, or I can maybe input a first idea into the editor and then experiment with moving the notes around in a programming sense after that point as well. So let's get the metronome running. Let's set our BPM to, let's say, 110 beats per minute. And let's just get a sense of, of rhythm before we start interacting with our rhythmic idea. So something like, that, something like that sounds good to me. So let's hit record and we'll capture that. Okay, so that last or the tape before looks good. 
or sounded good at the time. So I'm gonna just zoom out on the MIDI clip editor and because I've been cycling around and recording, it's kept all of those previous takes. It's just only letting us see the last take. So I'll just grab the loop brace or the start marker in fact, and just drag that back to possibly that one there. Let's see what that sounded like. We can turn off the metronome now. Okay, so I want to quantize that a little bit and get the timing a bit, bit more in. So let's highlight those notes there and select with the control, quantize. And I think that first MIDI note is a little bit too late, so I'm just gonna manually use the arrows to plunk that right on the beginning of the bar. Okay, so that's a, a new idea I've gotten from a, a loop that I brought in because I like the, the vibe of the sound, but not necessarily the actual play order of the content of that loop. So the next thing we can do with drum racks, which is quite interesting to experiment with, is if I go to the actual device view here, is each one of these drum pads is actually its own little, let's say a channel within a mixer. So as well as the sounds being on each one of these pads, uh, subsequent processing that will happen afterwards can be added individually to each one of these slices as well at the same time. So let's just play the clip and figure out which of these pads is being utilized at the moment. So slice five, that's our kind of accenting one at the beginning of each, each repeat of this phrase. So I'm gonna drag one effect onto that and I'm, I'm thinking something that makes it seem bigger. So a reverb would be a good one to drag onto there. So go to audio effects, go to reverb and just drag that onto that particular slice. So that sounds like that, but the other slices are left as they were. Now, taking that concept a little bit further, the play order is it goes slice five, slice four, then slice three, and then there's a rest, and then the same repeat of the order again. So I'm thinking I might add a delay to that last one so it has a little tail to help it then lead into the beginning of the, the phrase again. So let's go for a delay or an echo, in fact. Let's just drag that onto slice three, it was. If we want to see the effects that are on here, we can just double click to open up the actual device view for that slice. And then now I can scroll across and see the actual echo that I've added to that sound source. I'm just gonna go in and modify that slightly. The timing is actually kind of in keeping with the existing rhythm we have. So I'm just gonna grab the timing for that delay and just speed it up a little bit. Okay, let's just rebalance that a little bit, pull the signal towards the dry signal there. Okay, so I'm happy with that so far. Next thing I wanna do is the same principles, but I'm gonna apply it to this vocal sample. Now, if you remember that, if we solo that. I can stop myself. It was a vocal phrase. Um, not necessarily got much transient information in there. So I'm gonna just double click that first. And we haven't got any like clear peaks that happen at the beginning of each usable sound if you wanted to slice that up. So instead what I'm going to do is just double click and add in what we call warp markers. So when we slice this up, and I'm just gonna add a couple of extra ones in there too. When we slice this up, it will take that as our guide as long as we choose the right uh, option when we do this slice to new MIDI track. So control click, slice to a new MIDI track. And it's the same menu we had the first time when we went from the browser instead and dragged the interpretation of that uh, audio file into the project. This time the audio clip's already there. We're just gonna um, modify it once it's in the project. So rather than transient, I'm gonna go for warp marker and instead of the slicing preset being built in this time, I will load up one of these presets, which are a bit more creative what we can do. 
So let's have a look at this carbonized preset here. Okay, so we've still got the original file, that's not been deleted. If we want to get rid of that, we can delete that at a later date. I'm just gonna solo this new MIDI clip that's been created as it did with the drum loop. And that will now play back my vocal. But it sounds incredibly different because if we go to the device view, you can see there's a whole heap of different parameter changes that have happened to that sound to give it this strange little bird chirping kind of sound. I'm not actually that keen on that, so I'm gonna use the undo function and just go back. And let's try that again and use a different setting this time. So, slice to new MIDI track. Let's go for tones and tribes and see what it does to the vocal. Okay, let's try this one out. I can... That's a diff very different interpretation of it. It's actually made it become percussive. So that's quite an interesting interpretation. And I think I'll do one more attempt at slicing that. I'll keep that one that's there this time. I'm not gonna get rid of it. It's an interesting layer to potentially have in the mix. And I'm gonna do slice to new MIDI tracks. We still have that original clip. I'm gonna go for built-in as the, the preset and warp marker. So we just get a clean cut of that sample originally. I can stop myself. So let's get rid of that original MIDI. And this time I'm going to try and program in a new kind of edit for our uh, MIDI part. So I'm going to go to insert MIDI clip. And let's play, let's mute that. We'll mute our kind of percussive version of the vocal and just play it alongside this rhythm that I already did with the, uh, the drum loop. So whereas before I used the MIDI controller to input this time, the, the last time, I'm gonna use the programming method to input this layer in. So let's put in a first note. I'm just gonna put the MIDI editor preview button on here so I can hear these slices. So let's try that as a rhythm part. Just using my arrow keys to move the note once it's highlighted. Just change the length there, double that one up. Let's try another slice. Let's try that out. Now, of course, as I'm doing these edits, if I feel that the sound can be embellished of one of these slices, I can go to the drum pad and drag in another effect to give it its own unique properties. That's all still an option at this stage as well. Okay, so let's pop that there. I'm going to alt and drag just to make numerous copies of that first one. And then I'll see if that bit needs populating at the end. That seems a bit intense there, so let's just switch these notes using the up and down arrows. Okay, let's introduce our percussive layer. And in fact, I'm going to borrow from my previous programming, so I'm going to remove that MIDI clip. And the same function as we do with the MIDI notes, Alt and drag allows me to just borrow from somewhere else and take the information from that previous track. So let me just change the size of that a little bit so we can see what's happened. So what we've done is we've had the original clip and then we've used the slice to new MIDI track to create our percussive part. And then because of the two different outcomes from the vocal, I've ended up keeping them both there. But we have that original clean slice version of the vocal, which I've just programmed. And then I've borrowed the sequence from that first edit and applied it to the other version of our sliced vocal that sound more percussive, just to see what happens. So let's give that a quick listen. Okay, 
Okay, so as you can see, there's lots of different ways of reworking an original idea. And something that's quite useful to do with this as well is not only treat this with external sounds that you bring into your song, also look at the things you may have already generated for one song section and take a piece of something from that section, slice it up and rework that idea to generate a new section for you to move to in your own compositions.